Imagine a sequence of numbers that has fascinated mathematicians and scientists for centuries. A sequence that appears in nature, art and architecture. A sequence that has been used to analyze financial markets and design algorithms. A sequence that has been the subject of countless research papers and books. This is the Fibonacci sequence. Named after Leonardo Fibonacci, an Italian mathematician who introduced the sequence to the Western world in his book Liber Abaci. The Fibonacci sequence has many interesting properties and applications in various fields, such as mathematics, science, art, and computer science. The Fibonacci sequence is the series of numbers in which each number is the sum of two preceding ones. The sequence starts with 0 and 1, and then each subsequent number is the sum of the two preceding ones. So, the third element of the sequence is 0 plus 1, so that's 1. The fourth element is 1 plus 1, so that's 2. The next element is 2 plus 1, so 3. Next we have 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. The sequence can be represented by the following formula. The Fibonacci sequence has many interesting properties, such as the fact that the ratio of any two adjacent numbers in the sequence approaches a special number as the sequence progresses. Starting with the second and third number, we have 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, and so on. If we plot our values on a graph, we can see that the ratio appears to converge to around 1.618. This number is called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is usually denoted by the Greek letter phi. We can calculate it from this formula. We take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth plus 1 element of the sequence divided by the nth element of the sequence. The golden ratio is an irrational number, and its exact value is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Now let's draw a square with a side length of 1. Then let's draw another square with a side length of 1 next to it. Now let's draw another square, this time with a side length of 2. We can see that the sum of side lengths of two smaller squares is equal to the side length of the bigger square. Now let's draw another square. We can see that the side length of this square is equal to 2 plus 1, so that's 3. If we let this pattern continue, the next square has side length of 5, the next 8, and the next 13, and so on. We can see that the side lengths of the following squares are equal to the subsequent elements of the Fibonacci sequence. Now let's draw a circular arc connecting the opposite corners of every square. This spiral is called the Fibonacci spiral and is an approximation of the golden spiral. The golden spiral is a logarithmic spiral with a growth factor equal to golden ratio. The golden ratio has been used to analyze the proportion of natural objects and artificial systems such as financial markets. It is found in many aspects of nature, for example, the number of petals in a flower consistently follows the Fibonacci sequence. Pine cones have a spiral arrangement of scales that follows the Fibonacci sequence. Snail shells and nautilus shells follow the golden spiral. The spiral patterns found in galaxies also follow the golden ratio. Even the human body exhibits many examples of the golden ratio, such as the ratio of the length of the forearm to the length of the hand. Hurricanes form logarithmic spirals as they move across the ocean. The golden ratio has been used in architecture for centuries. The Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the earliest examples of the golden ratio in architecture. The Parthenon in Athens, Greece is another example of golden ratio in architecture. Modern architecture also uses golden ratio. For example, the Notre Dame de Yacht Chapel in Ronchamp, France and the Sydney Opera House are both examples of modern architecture that use the golden ratio. Many famous artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Salvador Dali use the golden ratio in their works. For example, the Mona Lisa's face is said to follow the golden ratio. The Last Supper by da Vinci also uses the golden ratio. Dali's The Sacrament of the Last Supper also uses the golden ratio. That's why the golden ratio is one of the most important numbers in mathematics.